Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. I've just received a very exciting package here from my man Greg over at Skyscraper Guitars and I'm really excited to open it up and I figured, uh, you know, it's guitar related stuff so I should probably share this with you. So yeah, Greg makes some really high quality tools. They're for guitar setup and fretwork and stuff like that. Uh, and that's what I'm dealing with here. I'm gonna compare these to a couple of the options that I have already in this video and upcoming videos. But the main point of this is to unbox this thing and show you guys how beautiful these tools are. So these are some really nice luthier tools. Um, they're very specific in their application and you're going to see just how beautiful these things are uh, right about now, I love getting stuff in these triangular boxes uh, from the U.S. Postal Service here. America Mail, as I like to call it. Okay, coming up. Whew. Wow, that's quite a bit of stuff. Okay, uh... There's, there's a fair bit going on here. Let me make sure that I know what all of it is. All right, we'll get to these in a minute. Um, let's start with this guy. This, you will have seen me use something very similar to, aka the same thing in a recent video. So this is a fret rocker for testing if your frets are level with each other, seeing if you have any that are high or any that are too low. This also has a height gauge on it, which is awesome. Super high quality piece here. Um, awesome anodized <laughs> aluminum. Like, look at this. It's beautiful. And uh, you can hang it on your wall, which is nice. They've got the logo etched right in there. There's not much you can say about a fret rocker, but I can compare it to my old one. And really, I'll tell you now, they're pretty much the same, except that this guy has the string height gauge. I don't know how the pricing on these compares. Um, obviously this one's beautiful. This will do the same thing as long as these are honed perfectly. And that's the part that I would say is the most concerning here. This I'm not entirely sure about. I know this is cheap. I don't know if these are perfectly flat. I imagine they're probably good enough. But this stuff I've seen kind of how Greg deals with having this stuff made. And I am more confident that this is perfectly flat than I am most of the stuff that's in my possession. So there we go, that's the fret rocker. I'm gonna have to find a place to display all this stuff. It's just, it's all just beautiful. Okay, I think I know what those are, so we'll put those to the side for the moment. Next up, these should be not straight edges, I would think, especially since they have notations on them about what guitars they're for. Oh, wow, okay. So here, here we've got, let me, let me pull the rest of these out. In this particular instance on these notch straight edges, again, we have the same issue where it's important that you make sure that you're dealing with something that's as close to perfectly flat as possible. That's the entire point. The edges have to be straight, right? And over time, the cheap ones can warp, they're thin, and they're a little bit harder to use. But if you get a good high quality one, which these obviously are, notwithstanding that they're just gorgeous, um, you don't have to worry about that sort of thing and you know that you're gonna get a decent fret job at the end or at least you're gonna have a good guide to go off. I know the boys over at Crimson Guitars also make a nice high quality one. Um, I mean, these are prettier, but uh, so what we've got here is a nice thick piece of metal. Let me see if I can refocus you. Kind of. Okay, screw it. Nice thick piece of aluminum. It's got a bevel on one side. Okay, you can see, I'll get you a little closer here, but a nice bevel, um, big notches, so no worries about hitting your frets or anything like that. Lots of holes in case you want to mount them different ways on your wall or something, hang them up. And the other side is perfectly flat. One of the nice things about these is actually the anodization helps. Having a color on there makes it easier. 
because when you go to check if it's flat, you don't just do it by feel. You look underneath and see if you can see any light. And when you're using the cheaper silver ones, well, it's harder to tell, honestly. So let's compare those to what I have here. Well, a couple different things to consider. One, the, the anodized one's about twice as thick. So that's going to make a huge difference as far as keeping this thing from warping. If it doesn't, we don't want it to bend. It's very sturdy. We want to make sure that this is going to stay as close to flat in both directions as possible so that we know that we're not going to mess up this. Also, I can tell you right away, again, I can't speak so much to the quality on those, but this, I am confident that that's a perfect edge. The bevel, honestly, not something that's super important, but will be helpful because that's going to help you when you put it in to look under it. It's just another, another element that makes this nice because you've got an unbeveled side and a beveled side to choose from, whatever's going to make it easier for you to see if there's any light under there and get this thing leveled off. We'll take a closer look at this in just a second here. Um, we'll do them all at the end, but I mean, it, you can tell just by picking these things up that these are way higher quality. Okay, and last but not least, this is one of the most important things you can have really, but there are a couple different options. Let's take a look. These are gonna be fret leveling beams. Now you can use a fret leveling file, and again, if you follow my channel, you will have seen me do that recently. Coming up, I will be doing a comparison where we check out a fret leveling file versus a fret leveling beam, take a look at the pros and cons for each and test them out. Damn, those are nice. So we've got, again, nice thick piece of metal here that we're dealing with. He's included strips of sandpaper. These are adhesive backs, so you can just stick them on and go, peel them off, stick them on again. I know that these are nice and flat. I'm confident in them, that I can use them to bevel, and I can use them to, you know, roll over edges and stuff like that on my fretboard. Really nice piece of kit. The other one, same thing except longer, and you want to have a nice long one. That's one of the key benefits of beams over files generally, spoiler alert for the video where we compare them, is having that length. So I've got a six and a 12 inch here. I know he also has an 18 inch, which is amazing. That's a very, very useful tool for working on your fretboards. Um, I'm really excited to work with these. I'm thinking I will probably, again, spoiler alert, probably be using these beams as opposed to my fret leveling files. Uh, I just think they're gonna work better for me and be easier to control. And having that added length gives me more confidence and uh, yeah, I, I can make sure I'm doing a good job. Now I just need to worry about getting the 18 inch one at some point. <laughs> All right, the other items we have here are for working with Floyd Rose Tremolos. So a lot of you guys who use floating trims, you'll find this stuff super useful. The first is a variety, and I should have put them kind of in order of thickness before putting them in front of the camera, just about dropped them right there, um, of stops. So you block your tremolo in, right? You block it in and make it stable and everything so that you can work on it. We've got four different thicknesses here, and if I can focus you in on them well enough, you'll notice it looks like there are angles probably in the camera. But what that is, is actually he's got little steps, very minute steps machined right into them. Um, yeah, so you can get very precise blocking to the exact height that you want pretty much and work from there. The other item here is a crazy little contraption that I frankly don't know how to use. I'll have to look. Um, comes with a couple of Allen keys and you use those to adjust this guy. And my understanding from my conversations with Greg is that this little piece, wow, how did he manage to engrave that so small? This little thing is for adjusting the intonation on your Floyd Rose. Um, there's an, definitely an adjustment to change the width of this. Let's see if I can show this to you a little bit. There we go, he's got his logo engraved right in there. That's incredible. Um, but yeah, beautiful little piece of equipment. I just, uh, I need to learn how to use it properly. I'm more of an Ibanez <laughs> tremolo kind of guy. So I'll see if this will actually help me out on, on that as well. I've got the zero resistance system on my guitar, my floating bridge. Um, but yeah, that, it's a pretty nifty piece of equipment right there.
So guys, as you can see, you're dealing with some really incredibly high quality stuff here. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive than some of the other stuff you'll find on the market. So if you're gonna be just working on one guitar, you know, doing one build, that kind of thing, you probably don't need to go for something quite like this. This is going to last a long time and do a great job for you. And that's where the benefit lies. Granted, there are ways to make several of these tools for yourself as well. They just obviously won't be machined the same way to the same quality, that kind of thing. So for somebody who works on quite a few guitars, like me, this is the kind of thing you want. So guys, I have the link to the Skyscraper Guitars channel down in the description if you want to check it out. Greg's a great guy. He's running a cool little company there. Throw him some support. Let him know I sent you. And also, of course, the link to the website where you can pick this stuff up if you want it. It's not an affiliate link this time. Just, again, small company. Great guy. Check out his stuff. I'm sure if you have any questions on how to use it and whatnot, he'd be happy to help you out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> They're quality tools. I wish I could make quality tools. I am going to figure out what to do about swapping out my old tools. And in an upcoming video, like I said, we'll do that comparison. And we're probably going to be doing it on this guitar because I'm getting some fret buzz issues here and it is time for me to fix this guy up. So we will do some fret work on here just like we did in our recent video. I know all these frets are pressed down well, so it's time to move on to the leveling process and then crowning and all of that. So, stick around, stay tuned, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, I would appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can see, uh, you know, the comparison, among other things. And, uh, yeah, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, have a good one.